Hi everyone! Today we are meeting my friend Philip Hamilton. We're at the National History Museum. He's just published a book, a fantastic book, about photography in the oceans. Philip is somebody I've known for about 15 years now. First he was working in finance, he had a 24 year successful career in finance, and now he's been spending five years as a professional photographer trying to get a bit of a awareness about protecting the ocean. So it's a big event for him today. We're very grateful that he found the time to spend a little bit of a, a few minutes discussing with us. Apologies for the noise of the dinosaurs at the, in the background. This is a National History Museum. So we're in the middle of nature, but hopefully we're gonna have a great conversation with Philip. So Philip, thank you so much for your time. I know it's very busy, it's the great event just now. The first question I would have for you is, how do you move from a career of 24 years in finance to become such a specialist photographer on the ocean? It is actually a good question, but I must say I've been running parallel lives for the last few years. This is about sharing my professional career that involved, as you know, emerging markets. In the oceans, 97% of fishermen are around the emerging market countries. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I come across every single time I was in emerging market workers for finance, I was exposed to the sea, to the reality and the problems of fishermen, the realities and problems of pollution and plastic and so on. So it have always been present throughout my financial career, not only because I've been on site, but at the same time doing every single holiday, family vacation, or whatever I was at sea. Tell us a little bit about the oceans, Philip. How do you Oof. feel when you're at Oof. What, what What is it like for you to do like that full time? Let me put it this way. When I first met a blue whale underwater while free diving, and we had an eye contact with the largest animal that ever existed, it transformed my life. And I guess beyond the idea of nature and what you what you feel, what it fulfills you, there's a bit of a mission, I guess. There's a bit of an idea of protecting. Sure, 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 sure. Listen, this is written in the in the chart of human rights, right? We have the obligation to pass this planet intact to future generations. When you see the reality of what is out there, you cannot see what is going on with pollution, with overfishing, with everything that's happening today, with climate change, with the acidity in the oceans, with El Nino effects and all this bleaching into corals. I mean, corals are structures that have no limit in terms of life. They could be 300,000 years old and we are killing them all. Uh, and they are going to disappear for good. When you see that, you need to keep fighting. You need to keep fighting. So, and Philip, how do you get that courage of keeping fighting? Because that looks like a lost cause it, sometimes. Absolutely. To me, there is one simple thing. Yeah. To care, you need to know. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is well ahead of caring. You cannot care about something if you don't know. So my mission at this stage, although it looks like a lost cause, if I can educate, if I can share awareness, to certain people of the importance of the ocean, then maybe they will change and they will make another change and then the potential people will recover not every species, not every ocean, not every coral reef, but we will protect a few things for the future. What have you learned about yourself in all this? You know, one thing that you tend to become much more tolerant. You, you tend to understand more the difficulties of, of people out there and why they are doing this. When you are in a port in places like India or Sri Lanka, when you know the reality of the Bay of Bengal, that there is nothing out there, that they have overfished everything, I frankly don't blame them. Because governments and organizations and should do better to give them alternatives, either in ecotourism or in other alternatives in terms of jobs. If we want them to stop destroying the planet, we need them to offer them an alternative. And the other thing that you need to learn is, is how you get into the communities. We accepted good news, but you get change at the communities level. I'm not talking about governments and corporations and other people, people such as yourself, myself and others, because we can have a conversation and maybe it's, it's easier, we can even debate. But when you get into the emerging market, when you get to see all these people and those realities, you really need to be very patient, you need to be very tolerant, and you need to 
really understand uh, why they are doing this. Just one last question. Sure. You know, if you look at the uh, the successful completion of your life, and you look at the potential achievements in what you're doing now, what are the three things you'd like to have an impact completely? To me, it's like a testimony, it's like a record of where the planet and the ocean were in 2018. Right. There are not that many people that have done something like that. So I will work in other things, for instance, I have a project ahead of me of that in mind that is very unique. No one has ever done it before and it has to do with uh, coral reefs. And why? Because coral reefs are going to disappear forever. So I would love to document things of what we used to have, so next time around we we'll protect other things better when we see what we have, the beauty of what we have. Excellent. Philip, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. I know you have a lot of guests <laughs> there waiting for you, inside the books and yeah, everything. Yeah. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.